Oh my gosh, I got something big. Howdy fish freaks. Welcome back to the channel. It is time to do some adventure traveling and do some fishing y'all. I'm tired of being around the city. I've been just cooped up here. It's time I get back to my roots. Where I live, this is where I grew up in this area. It's always like a month behind of where I really started learning to, to bass fish a lot of lakes. Uh, out in east parts parts of Texas and south parts of Texas, central part. When I'm in North Texas, it's always like a month behind. It throws me off mentally, so I've got to get out of here. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, everybody. We're hitting a million subs this year. We're doing it. Tell your friends, tell your moms, tell your dads, tell tell everybody. I, I, we got to do it. Right now, we're just packing up some some freeze dried meals, some storable foods because they're quick and easy uh, they really do make things easy when you're on the road and doing truck camping so you don't have to carry a ton of stuff in your cooler stuff like that do a lot of cooking you know just keep it simple get down to fishing we're also going to pack up some firewood we got the bedroll game changer for truck camping y'all some clothes it's going to be cold firewood Go in the LFG bin. We're ready to rock, y'all. So let's get on the road. Let's get our motor on in. Yeah. Adventure time. It's time to get the sweet smell of a two and a half, three pound bass a day. That's what I'm predicting. This feels good. I'm I'm in the heartland of Texas. So the lake I'm going to right now is about four hours from, from where I live now. But when I started fishing in college, and learning some new lakes. This is where I really, I learned how to catch fish in this, this area and I miss it. I miss fishing down here. This is before I really started focusing on Lake Fork, which is a whole nother thing. Um, fishing like Central Texas and then East Texas and North Texas is its own, it's its own bag of worms. Literally, just different techniques, timing, everything like that. I wanna get back to um, some of these lakes this week and see if they're still on, see if, see if they still hold true. I'm getting to the point in my, my fishing life that I probably don't adapt enough when I go to a, a, a new place. Um, I like the things that, that I do, that, that I wanna make work, and sometimes it's not the deal. We'll really get a good 24, maybe even 36 hours on one lake, see how it is, and we might migrate to another one, you know, just depending on uh, if it's good or not, so we'll keep trucking. Head on to the bass. We're living in the grass. Hopefully, folks, we are here. And by the looks of the parking lot, it is hopping like popcorn out here. My gosh, a lot of worm danglers out here today. So, and I mean, we're here middle of the day. I'm sure a lot of people have left. It's good. The lake looks really low though really down so not really sure how that's gonna affect the spawn and I do say spawn because uh, the fish do spawn early out here uh, number one we are in a, a warmer part of the state 75 right now I'm about to take the sweatshirt off it's hot I literally went from 35 degrees this morning to 75 right now uh, traveling four and a half hours and then we've also got a uh, power plant that warms this lake. But the fish will normally spawn around the full moon in January, February, even December. Uh, so we are around that and we're actually post full moon. So some fish have probably already spawned. But anyway, let's just crank her up and let's go see what's going on out here. I'm excited. 67 degrees, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I think, uh, I think we'll be all right. It won't be all right, y'all. Okay, y'all, let's do this. This is a little unconventional, what I'm about to do, but, you know, the parking lot is showing that the, the banks are probably just getting absolutely annihilated. 
Um, I'm going to start offshore. I'm going to start offshore at a kind of a high spot off of a creek channel. Found some shad in like 25 feet of water. Looks like there's a little feeding coming up to 20. I've actually got, looks like a couple of bass here right underneath me right now. Um, looks like they're on the move. <sighs> I feel like I'm close to something. I'm just not on the juice. I need to find the juice. So we just got to do a little searching. That right there. That's the juicies. Look at all the fish right there, man. They're stacked. I don't know why I picked up the Ned Rig first. I probably should have picked up something a little bit more beefy. <sighs> Some big, big juicy pork chop down there. Boom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I jerked the rod out of my hand there. That one hit it just about under the boat. We're gonna have to tie the jig on. I feel like the, the spirits of the lake are just telling me, tie your football jig on and just give her a dangle, son. Oh, that's just delicious looking right there. Little 9 16 ounce gridiron. And I believe we're just gonna go ahead dress her up with bandito but i would go with that little subtle subtleness since i had two claps and no connects just gonna trim this up guys take that off a little bit take the nose off separate our back flaps spread our skirt Get it out of the plastic keeper. Get that good fluff on there. Ooh, you know it. And then go the extra mile. Take our little dipping glow. All right, y'all, I, I had to abandon that game plan. I did that for like 30, 45 minutes. Didn't get, well, I got two bites, but I don't know, it, just, it was weird. Those fish weren't really sticking put like I wanted them to. So we are just gonna go to a windblown riprap bank, pick up a jerk bait, some other hard baits, and just get kind of warmed up, you know? We need a proper warm up here. Before we get into that technical deep stuff of course the jerk bait is your friend winter all the way through the spawn and beyond honestly really fantastic lure to keep in the arsenal you see some bait fish here 10 to 12 that's good so i know i got bait getting blown against this bank here and i'm gonna guess these babies are going to be anywhere from two foot all the way out to 20 along this rip wrap. God, this looks, uh, let's see a couple of fish right off the rocks right here. And we're there. That looks really good for a, a mid depth crankbait. <sighs> Probably going to have to tie one on folks. Oh, got him. First fish. Hooked up, y'all. The jerk bait. It strikes. Well, this might be a little bit bigger than I thought it was. Nope. Nope. Just the old two two ski. Oh my gosh, he's fat. Wow, you got a face full of it, bud. Slurped it. Man, it feels good to have a warm bass in that 70 degree water. Woo. All right, that's what we need to just kind of get a little warm up going. I am going to put on a crankbait, but jerkbait's just, uh, it's killer, y'all. 
release you into the wild. There you go. Love the tenacity, love to see it. There's another fish right there off these rocks. So I'll probably get uh, some jerkbait fish here on the kind of the, the shallower section thrown up there and they'll come up and, and tag it. But I'm interested in those ones I was seeing down there in like 10, 12 foot. So we'll kind of make a pass here. There's another one, got him. That one connected nicely. That one connected nicely. So we're on a little program here. We're on a little program. That one came off, that's okay. Not a giant, but we're getting, getting some activity here. There is a mess of them right here off this uh, point. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I'm gonna try a football jig, maybe even a Ned, honestly. The Ned right here, I got a little wire on this rig. It might keep me out of the rocks, might not, but I'm just gonna throw in that depth where I was seeing this fish right here. Let's see if we can pick another one up. Got him right there under the boat. Oh yeah, you were. And you can see right there those fish. Okay, didn't get in my hand, but I was uh, showing you the graph while I was fighting the fish. Same size, two skis. But there are, uh, there are definitely some fish in that depth there. Pulled that one out of nine, about nine foot. So the next move, we're gonna tie on a diving crankbait. There's another one, got him. Same spot, right into the boat. Wow, this one's got a little, little tug to it here. And I mean, he just like, just took off with it. Yeah, this one's it's got a little fight. I'm liking it. Man, that is, these are just healthy, healthy fish right here. Got them on light line, so I might have to seat grab him. Eh, I don't know. Pretty solidly hooked in the nostrils. Oh my. Dude, on a spinning, spinning rod, on our little finesse rod, the fish has been caught a couple of times. Super healthy though, very aggressive. Love to see it. Love to see it, man. That's, uh, that's two bites just right under the trolling motor here. Solid little move coming over here, y'all, to fish this mid-depth, you know, four to 12. I think I had four bites in less than 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I know there's a bite going on in this, this mid-depth is I'm gonna switch up to a recon. Ooh, oh my gosh, I forgot about the contender as well. <laughs> Little fun noises come out when I get excited. Uh, this, this is a bait that I've played around with a little bit. I'm not a big swim bait person, but uh, I just had a, a, a flashback to uh, a day where I just threw swim baits uh, in this area with a buddy of mine. And we, anyway, it was a long time ago. It was over 10 years ago. We, we caught some good fish. So anyway, that's an option. Oh, I gotta go deep in here. Uh, where are you? Okay. I unfortunately left my big recon box in the Guggen Tune, so I'm forced to, I'm forced down to four of these. It's not good, but um, you know what? I may go with, I may go with the old craw color right now. Yeah, corn pop maybe. Mm, yeah, let's go craw. I'm gonna switch up my rod and line now to, this might be 12. This bait dives eight to 12. You can see it actually says it right there on the bait. This color is called Sriracha Craw. We're gonna hit the rocks now. I've already showed you guys 
what it kind of looks like on the graph. You know, the, just paying attention to those little things, like seeing four or five fish in a, in a certain depth, um, that, that can make you switch up, you know, switch up your stuff. So that's exactly what I saw. I'm going to be able to keep my lure in the depth where I was seeing those fish pretty easily. I don't know if they're going to be really going after the crankbait. You know, sometimes they're in that depth and they, they don't want a crankbait. They want a jig or something like that. But it's a really efficient way if they get on it to just get it in their face, keep it in front of them. Rod of choice here. This is a early prototype, but the reaction rod. So this one's seven two. It's a it's a medium moderate, so it's a slower, slower rod loads up slower. You want that for for crankbaits, get good casting and just keep the fish pinned up. But mainly mainly the casting. I'm seeing a couple back in my zone here. Be able to flip out there and catch those but yeah i'm sitting in uh 10 12 casting kind of at a not a 45 but i'm i'm throwing into where it's like six foot and then working it out hitting those rocks just grinding i pause it every once in a while like when i'm feel like i'm making good contact like i'm about to get hung or something i'll stop it let it rise up and that's about it there's one. oh god he hit it on the move hit it on the move all right well first bite on the crankbait ladies and gentlemen important tip when you get snagged on rocks shake your bait use the weight of the lure to try to knock the hooks out god these fish are just y'all they're just there on the bottom like it is as clear as day you know, unfortunately I don't I don't believe I'm gonna be able to get that one out I think it got eaten by the rock monster I don't feel it shaking at all it just feels solid but sometimes you pull on it come out just like that magic I got got three. That's my pit where you were. Yeah. Back by the seven pound bass an hour ago. Really? Yeah, right, right where you were, right there where that duck is. I may have to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> he was out this morning now. He caught away on this morning about this time. Yeah. Seven pound bass. What a beautiful. Woo! Hey, I got one. It might be it. I'm hooked up, man. It might be his brother. You're good luck. I like you. Woo! That's a good one. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, how awesome is that? That's a pretty decent one there, y'all. That's a little bigger than the other ones. He ain't a seven pounder, but thank you for the fishing report, sir. That's the biggest one of the day. Yeah, that'll work. Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Woo, baby. Oh my gosh. That was so cool, man. Hooked up while that guy was telling me that fishing story. What a tasty cake. There, y'all. That is just a beautiful, healthy, about a three pound bass. Amazing. Back into the deeps, the 12 foot. I miss fishing down in this, this area. I, um, you know, I love where I'm at. I move, I move there for family and business and everything like that. But God, just that little magic right there, that guy driving by, you know, I've probably seen that guy out here before. He's probably been running this deal for years good vibes and it's like that a lot of small towns around here i just love it man i love texas in general but especially the heart of texas you know something special about it so anyway y'all that's uh that's a good fish i'm gonna call a three i'm gonna call a three pounder i'm gonna keep on this tactic with the red craw and uh just keep trucking down here see if we can get old big mama Mm. 
Uh-huh. Got him on the crank, little guy. Oh, come off. Wanted the crank. Oh, God. Man, I've lost so many right here. Seems like they do, they do want to tap this crankbait. Oh my gosh, I got something big. Oh, we hit it so nicely. What do we have here? God, the way he first took off. What is this? Oh, it's just a nice chunky one there. Oh yeah, come here, baby. God, when that fish took off with that, y'all, I thought I had Thor. Oh my gosh, that's a tasty one. Woo! Yee! Woo! Good fish, y'all. Good one. Kerplunk. Oh gosh, that one clapped it. Uh, I was in the rock. I was getting it out of the rock and just had to have it. Love to see it. Love to see it, man. Eat your tasty crawfish and get big. That's what I say. <laughs> that was cool, y'all. This bait is uh, this definitely seem, seems to be doing the deal here seems like they want this just a little bit more than the other stuff let him go just a good one just that good two and a half love to have everyday fish we got a pretty good number of fish y'all just coming out here for the afternoon and uh trying to figure things out get the general bite going Something like this, I'm not afraid to go back and forth on because it's going to reload. It's just such a big piece of cover. Really, you could call it structure, but it's got 20 feet out in front of it, bait fish moving through, lots of fish moving up and down on that slope, so it'll reload. And that means, you know, just more bass will come in at different times of the day. So, I got no problem going back down this thing and catching them. Uh, I think I'm, tomorrow we're going to switch gears and go explore some other things but late in the day right now like it's four o'clock i think i'm just going to try to finish out on this little deal this little pattern we got going uh then we got to set up our little camp for tonight so pretty good little afternoon dangle y'all excited to be back in the heart of texas man throwing that red crank too Whew, it's a fun bite oh gosh i mean Got to meet, got to be making contact with the rocks. That is the key. If you're not hitting the bottom, you're just not getting bit. Just got another bite right there. Short strike. There's one. Oh, yeah. Oh, he just loaded. Just loaded up and gave her a rip. Oh, goodness, son. You barely got it. You did not fight like the others, man. This is it. This is the bait of the day. It's the key. I'm going to pick up a yig right here. See if I can slow down. Pop a tasty. Same concept, just tapping the rocks. There's another one. Got him. He actually ate it. I think they're just small. Yeah, that's the problem. They're just small.
biting the tails off and all that. All right, we're going back to old trusty here. Jig bites, fun. I feel like I could, I mean, I got like six bites in a row. They were just small. I can tell by the way they're tapping at it. Whatever it is, it's got to make contact with rocks. So it's one of those kind of bites. Oh my, that one clapped. Oh, the, the crank. Little one. Those are the ones that I think I've missed a lot. You know, they're just little and they're slapping at it. Kind of get those out of the way. I know if I throw my jig down there, I'm gonna get those bites too, but. My good old Sally. Last cast right here on this spot. And I'm just going to do a little exploration. A little minor exploration to kind of game plan for tomorrow. Don't tell me. Don't tell me she's gone. Oh, she came out. There we go. Thought we were about to lose our only red. Oh my gosh, last cast. Oh, it's a good one. Is it the last cast though? If, when that happens? It almost never works out that way. Ooh, digging. Sally B. Diggs. Come on up here. You're barely hooked. I'll, I'll let you get off right now if you want to. I'm going to give you one last little shot at it. Oh. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. All right. Ooh, a juicy little football. Oh my gosh, that fish is heavy, man. I wanna say that fish is three pounds for sure. Just the, the heft of it. Healthy, healthy fish. All right, for good luck, I'm gonna put it away. Just, just do it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here for more than today, so we'll save some of that good juice. Caught, but it's more largemouth bass than I've caught in the last like months combined. Well, that's not true. That is not true. I've, I've filmed some things off this channel where I've caught them for other other stuff, other fun projects. But I'm just glad I made the decision to come down here back in some of my home home territory that I'm just a lot more familiar with. We go check out a couple of things and. Uh, continue our quest for the large mill. It's been pretty good today. Okay, a little jerky. Oh yeah. Let's throw you on the big stumps here on a big old point. Let's see if Big Sally comes out of one of these trees just suspended. Decides to come on with it. There's one. She's in the tree. Come out of there. Oh, that's a good one. She's suspended on a tree. Oh my gosh. That feels like a good fish. That's gonna break my line. I can see her boiling right there. Oh. oh, it feels hefty. Still haven't seen it. Oh, it's a good one. <sighs> Boy. butter bean are you full of eggs what's going on there that is just a straight up butter ball man okay new spot new tactic look at that spot literally right there that's cool oh that fish had power 
So how bad is it? Yeah, we need to retie, but it's not terrible. This is a technique right here, y'all, that I've used many times on uh, on Lake Fork. When uh, when you're going into spawning areas, if you've got deep trees, like I'm in 20 feet of water, but that fish, a lot of times those females, so they'll just kind of suspend and wait until conditions are right to move up and spawn. And they'll just go up and down the tree, kind of like a, uh, you know, uh, a thermometer they go uh, they go up with the water temps they come down so jerk bait the scout right here all i'm doing is i'm just kind of throwing this around the trees over 20 feet of water and getting those those bass that are suspending in there and i was lucky to get that one out i have um this is 12 pound yeah 12 pound yeah it's 12 pound gs fluoro and I just kind of let the fish saw back and forth. I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on it. That's when you break, it's a dance. You got to be delicate with it, but I played that one right and got it out. And I thought it was going to be a hammer. It wasn't, but that's what you got right there. Six foot suspended. There's another one down there, but they'll hang in those trees. Oh, come here. We netted one. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Biggest of the day right now on the old net ski. Get away from the trees, please. That's a tasty one there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Get around that motor. There we go. We're at the leader knot. Staying in that 12 zone, y'all. Heavy. <sighs> Got off my jig and I went down to the Ned. I did it. <sighs> That's a good one, man. Slurped. I don't know if it's the biggest of the day. Solid three ski though. And I think that's a good one to end on. All right, y'all, this was the key to, uh, to my success today. The Sriracha Craw Red um, Recon. So I was fishing that in like 10 foot, uh, sitting in my boat in like 12, but it seems to be that eight to 12 foot zone is where these fish are gonna be. This was the fastest way to cover it, and I ended up getting my biggest bass on this. But uh, at the end of the day, I did discover there's a, there's a little timber bite that's happening. Some fish are suspended, some are on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna have to dial that. This is actually a technique I wanted to share with you guys um, a few weeks ago when I was I was cranking rip wrap and it was, it was bad. I, I just couldn't get it going. Um, so I was glad that we were able to show that today. It's a good, it's a good pattern early spring through spring um, and anywhere, you know, roadside riprap. Um, there's a lot of small waters, rivers that have riprap and cranking it's really good. You just got to find that depth uh, that works best where that bait is. That was about 10 to 12 foot today and it had to be making contact with the bottom. So this bait just, you know, mid-depth cranking allows you to do that um, and stay in that strike zone for a long time. We're gonna switch here tomorrow though. And we're gonna get that timber, we're gonna get that jig out. Probably dabble with some of those suspended fish with a jerk bait, um, maybe throw a swim bait a little bit. But uh, I think that's where we're probably gonna get our bigger bites is those fish that are kind of locked down on little drops within the timber areas that are getting ready to move up and spawn. Subscribe right here to the channel and go ahead and hit that thumbs up for some good old fashioned bass snatching. And thanks for tuning in guys. Um, let me know in the comments. Just, I don't know. Just leave a comment. Say fart, poop. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe don't say that. Maybe just say something nice. Spread some goodness. Um, I hear it drives engagement, but anyway. Just don't cuss. It's me. Anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow for the good old morning dangle. See ya.